The NRS Early Childhood Development Center is hiring full-time and part-time teachers. If you love children and are interested in empowering the next generation, this is for you. Email Candice at office at nrschurch.org or call 205-974-4520. In addition, our pre-K has a lead teacher position available starting at $40,000 per year. A bachelor's degree in early childhood education is required for our pre-K lead teacher position. Again, call Candace at 205-974-4520 or email office at nrschurch.org. Let's empower the next generation together. Hey leaders, it's that time again to sign up for small groups. If you've been wanting to lead a small group or have an idea for a small group, this is your time to sign up. All you have to do is go to beatmetothestart.net, click the banner that says Small Group Leader, and sign up. Small group registration starts September 3rd, and our new semester starts September 24th. While I was singing for Jesus, my choir member introduced me to prostitution. Uh, my choir member from the Baptist church introduced me to prostitution. It wasn't the pimp that I got pregnant by. It was actually the church girl that turned me out. And not only did she introduce me uh, to prostitution, she introduced me to drugs. And so I became addicted to cocaine and ecstasy. Now, I went to prison for a crime, but that's not all the crimes I was doing. I had everything from doing crimes in the street to doing crimes in heat to doing crimes in the corporate America to doing crimes in every everything that I did if it sold and it made a certain amount of money I did it until it didn't make money no more being touched and having I was having sex at five and it just became normal wow. it became so normal past me because I was going to it we are the ones that are was brought to America and called those slave ships our identity was stolen our culture was taken our ancestors was raped, our ancestors was robbed, our ancestors was beat down, and we are the result of that cataclysm that has happened to our people. We now, today, have to rise up to understand who are we and where did we come from, and why are we in the condition that we are in. Unconventional Conversations, a new video series hosted by Dr. Thomas Beavers, coming Wednesday nights in September. Hey, what's up? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to week number three of 21 days of prayer and feasting, a catchy kind of way to say that we are focused on prayer, but you can eat at the same time. Our calendar year is divided into two parts. January through May is the first half of the year. August through December is the second half of the year. June and July is halftime. We have completed halftime and we are already in the month of August kids have returned to school and what better way to start the second half of the year than 21 days of prayer and feasting go ahead and tap the share button that is on your screen when you do it your text message or email icon is going to pop up and i want you to take the link for it to five people inside of your contacts invite them to pray with us and those of us tuned in via the dial in and youtube if you received the text that i sent out this morning or at the beginning of the week i want you to take that text forwarded to five people in your contacts. What text am I talking about? Take out your cell phone, text the word STAR to 94253 for up to the minute updates of all of the wonderful things going on at the STAR Church. Get the news firsthand before it ever hits the TV, the radio, before it ever hits your cell phone, or before it ever hits social media. Get it firsthand by way of your cell phone. Text STAR to 94253. Last but not least, I am doing something called Unconventional Conversations. It's getting ready to drop the first Wednesday in the month of September. Last summer, we did a series called Subjects That Sizzle in which we tackled all of the hot button topics in Christendom. Well, Unconventional Conversations is a spinoff from Subjects That Sizzle. Instead of us talking to Christians about these hot button topics and telling Christians what the Bible says about it, I'm talking to people who are actually in the lifestyle currently or who were formerly in that lifestyle. I did a conversation called from porn to the pulpit. I did a conversation with a Hebrew Israelite. I did a conversation with a Christian 
who's walked away from the church, not God, but who struggles with homosexuality. And I also did a conversation with a business owner who had a fiasco in prison where he tried every single different faith. Be on the lookout for that. I promise you it's going to be a blessing to your life. One of our team leads is getting ready to lead us this morning. I'll see you soon. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to day 21 of 21 Days of Prayer and Feasting. My name is Pastor Strick, and we've made it, guys, to the 21st day, and we did it together. So I want to thank you for hanging in with, it, with us and being a part of our corporate prayer for these last 21 days. I already know we have some phenomenal testimonies that are coming out because it is I know of some personally that has happened during these 21 days. And I'm so grateful to God to see his hand move in our lives. I need you to do me a favor this morning. If you haven't already done it, I need you to share this. If you are on Pastor's YouTube page, just hit the share button and share this with friends of yours so they can get up and wake up with us in prayer. And if you're on the prayer line, I haven't forgot about you either on our corporate prayer line. Uh, I would like for you to share this with people that are in your contacts as well. Allow them to get up and pray with us today as we close out these 21 days of prayer and feasting. I so very much want to say prayer and fasting, but that's in January. So we have been able to eat during this time and uh, we are still concentrating ourselves every morning and praying corporately together. And I'm so happy to be with you this morning. That being said, if you already have shared it, if you're on YouTube, please put I've shared it inside of the comments. And we're going to get started. I want to just go ahead and get into prayer this morning. Uh, I am still kind of like on a high from last night at the Night of Hope. You know, this was a a different service for the star to have so many pastors uh, at the star to have Pastor E. Dewey, Dr. E. Dewey Smith, and then all the um, pastors that came in that are a part of the assembly. Thank you guys so very much for coming and being a part of uh, what the star is trying to do and allowing us to kind of host this event as well. And definitely big shouts out to uh, Pastor Thomas Beavers and all of his hard work that he puts in to making sure that the star is being led in the right direction. Also, big shouts out to our First Lady Candace Beavers as well. Let's go into prayer, guys. And uh, we want to petition God together. So, Father God, we just thank you and praise you for just waking us up this morning for another opportunity, God, to give you all the glory. Father God, we acknowledge you in your power, in your strength, and in your anointing. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Father, the down across for our sins that we may be free. And in that freedom, God, we are saved and we can also petition you as well. Father, there's so many people uh, that have testimonies that have come out of these 21 days of prayer and feasting. And I thank you, God, for answered prayers. Father, we also have some people that are still struggling in life, whether it's financial struggles marital struggles, uh, family struggles, or God, just the, the struggles that life brings people. The mental stress of life has had so many of us down. Father, I pray that you visit them like never before today, that you answer their prayers like never before today, that they know that there is a God that cares for them. Father God, I pray for the hearts that are broken today, that you mend them in your son Jesus' name. I pray, God, against any plan that Satan has to um, tear up families, to divide families, God. I pray, Lord God, you send those plans down to the pits of hell and that you will allow those families to have the unconditional agape love, Lord. Love that will surpass uh, any sin. It covers multitudes of sin. I pray, Lord God, that you would just 
pour your love into the hearts and minds of your people. That even though circumstances in a lot of cases don't change, God, or haven't changed yet, you can give them the peace that they need to be able to live through it. Father, we have so many that are in need, but God, you have more than enough to give. I pray, God, that as people are even putting their prayer requests in the chats, and as they're physically writing them in, or if they're on a prayer line, God, and they're saying their prayers right now, things that they really need you to do, they're petitioning you right now, God, I pray as you see the chats, if you hear the prayers from our conference line, God, that you begin to answer them. That you begin to take your loving arms, God, and just hug them and give them the comfort they need to make it through this time. Father, yes, uh, so many of us are struggling. And yes, God, so many of us are in a winning season. And we thank you for a winning season as well. We thank you for being overcomers, God. We thank you, God, that we are the head and not the tail. We thank you, God, that you have showed up and showed out in our lives already. And I pray, God, that as you have already done some amazing things in our lives, Father, that you would continue to do what you've already done. I pray, God, that people that may, Lord God, really uh, be in a depressed state, not knowing what's coming next in their lives, that you would give them a peace, that you would calm their spirits and let them know that you are there with them. I thank you, God, for all you've done. And again, for all the testimonies that have come out of these last 21 days. And I give you all the glory for it. In your son Jesus' name, I say this prayer. Amen. Wow. What a way to start your day. Oh, my goodness. Listen, I want to talk about God answering our prayers. So put God answers prayers in the comments. And I'm going to get started from uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 37. So this is the story of King Hezekiah, who is actually king of Judah at this time. And with King, with the king of Judah, he has a problem. He's about to be invaded by Zennacherib. Zennacherib, I want to say that right. That's the best way I can pronounce it. And he's king of Assyria. And he sent a message to King Hezekiah. And it has thrown King Hezekiah for a loop. He doesn't know what to do. And in, uh, I think this is verse, yeah, verse 14, it starts, uh, so Isaiah 34, 14. I want to start reading that in the New Living Translation. See what King Hezekiah did here. So after King Hezekiah received the letter from the messenger, he read it and went up to the Lord's temple and spread it out before the Lord. Hezekiah prayed this prayer before the Lord. O Lord of heaven's armies, God of Israel, you are enthroned between the mighty cherubims. You alone are God of all the kingdoms of the earth. And hey, listen, that is like, is, is classic, a way to start your prayer by acknowledging who God is. Like, that's just the way to do it. I want to, I didn't mean to stop right there. I want to read more, but every time I read this, I'm just, it, it's, it makes me think about how we should all open our prayers up acknowledging who God is. Let me tell you something. God likes to be honored. He wants us to know. He wants us to say who he is. Oh, Lord. Of heaven's armies, God of Israel, you are enthroned between the mighty cherubims, the angels. You alone are God of all the kingdoms. What a way, again, to open a prayer. Now, this is King Hezekiah that got a bad report. Like, he's about to be invaded. And the first thing he does is take it into the temple of the Lord and starts to pray. If you, I want to stop right here, have got a bad report, all right? 
I'm asking you to listen to what King Hezekiah did. And you can read it for yourself because I'm chopping this whole chapter up. Isaiah 37. If you read that chapter, you understand, number one, what the letter said. And number two, as I'm talking about what King Hezekiah did, first thing he did was go to the Lord. Yeah, there may be things that may frighten you. There may be things in your life that really make you afraid or that you really have problems with, that you really struggle, that you are really stressed because of some type of message you've got. <laughs> but you serve of God. It's so much bigger than any message that you may receive. I want to keep going, but I just had to stop right there. He says... You are the God of all the kingdoms of the earth. You alone created the heavens and the earth. Then he petitions him with something. He says, bend down, O Lord, and listen. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Listen to King Zennacherib's words of defiance against a living God. I already like what King Hezekiah is saying. He's, he's recognizing himself as the middleman. Like they're coming to invade his kingdom. But he's saying he's not defying me, God. He's defying you. If you have a bad report. And you take it to the Lord. God, this is the report I have. You said that I'm blessed. You said I'm the head and not the tail. You said, this remind him of the promises. This letter defies the promises that you have for me, O oh Lord. Take it to him. Get out of the way. God, they gave me this. I'm giving it to you. They, this is you. Like This is something that you can handle. I always tell you, man, God can always fight. Your battle is better than you can. Get out of his way and let him fight him. Let the Lord handle his business. Now, this king of Assyria was definitely not coming, and just coming against Hezekiah. He was coming against the Lord. All Hezekiah had to do was what he did, was get out of the way. God, these people are defying you in this letter. What are you going to do? I'm still like, I've, what, what verse did I stop at? So the finds of the Lord, it is true, Lord, that the king of Assyria has destroyed all of these nations. And they have thrown their gods of these nations into a fire and burned them. But of course, the Assyrians could destroy them. They were not gods at all, only idols of wood and shaped by humans. Now, O oh Lord, our God, rescue us from his power, then all of the kingdom of the earth will know that you alone are God. Man, give it back to him. God, I need you to show and prove in my situation that you're God. Let the people that are aware of this bad report that I got that you're bigger than this report for me. That I serve a God that's still living, that's still true, and he's bigger than this report. I'm telling you, put God in this case. It's not a test, but he's just saying, let the people know that you're God. Y'all remember when the children of Israel, children of Israel was coming out and they had to begin to, they were coming out of Egypt, and they had to begin to fight battles. And they were winning battles so much that it says the name of the Israelites went out. And, and Joshua, the name of Joshua and the Israelites went out that all of these nations knew that their God was actually helping them defeat these other nations. Allow the friends, family, the people you're around, your co-workers to know about your God, even when there is a bad report. Take it to him. Say, God, I, everybody that knows that I got a bad report, 
They need to know your power and your strength. Man, I'm hoping you're getting this right here. This is a simple message that you don't have to hold on to the bad report. Say it's not mine and give it to the Lord. Now, there's certain things that we have to do with health and, and, and finances and all this other kind of stuff. When you There's things that you have to do. But one of the things that I'm going to encourage you to do with getting a bad report is giving it to the Lord. Okay, allow him to fight his battle on your behalf. God, I pray that people are hearing this today. There's so many times we get bad reports and just go uh, this, uh, mentally just kind of lose it because of a little stress that come in our life. God says, allow those burdens that are on you, give it to him because it's light for him. I mean, you can use the words like the kids. It'd be like, it's light work. It's light work for God. He can handle that. Allow him to handle it in your life. God desires for us to pray like Hezekiah prayed. And when we pray and we petition God and we go to him and we say, God, this is your battle. This other king, this king of Assyria is coming against you. He's defying you. After this prayer, God sent an angel down and killed 185,000 men. Hezekiah did not even have to fight. The battle is the Lord's. Now I want to encourage you right now to even live a life from a place of victory and not defeat. Like so many times we're climbing a mountain, like I'm working hard, I'm trying to get somewhere. Be somewhere. Be the woman of God, the man of God that God called you to be and live from a place of victory and not defeat. I'm not saying don't be humble. But you know, when you are victorious and you're victorious in the Lord, he gets the glory. I want to encourage you with that today. God does answer prayers and he will answer your prayer. Go to him, petition him, take that bad report to the temple. Just like Hezekiah did, God, this is the word that I have. I need you to move on my behalf. Allow God to move like only he can. I pray that this encourages you this morning. Like I told you, I'm still kind of excited after the night of hope last night, watching uh, the message, listening to the message last night and everything that went on. I mean, I love to see the move of God and to see um, pastors be encouraged by another pastor. It's just an awesome sight. And I'm glad that it was done at New Rising Star and pastor had a chance to host this event. And It's just awesome being in that atmosphere. That being said, I know you have some testimonies. We really want to hear them. Okay. So even if you go to, you can put it in the comments, the testimonies that you have on this video, or you can even go to New Rising Star Church Facebook page and just make a comment. Let us know the testimonies you've had through these 21 days of prayer and feasting. Father God, I pray. That as we end these 21 days this morning, that we don't end the opportunity to communicate with you every day through prayer. Father God, we thank you for the testimonies of all the people that you have helped these 21 days corporately. We have people uh, a part of this prayer call from all over the country. And God, you are everywhere listening to all our prayers and moving on our behalf. And we thank you for that. Father God, I pray for the rest of today that as we begin this day with you in prayer, be with us through the rest of our day. And again, God, in all we do, we give you the glory in your son Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hey, guys, go in peace. Thank you so very much for hanging out with us today. Again, my name is Pastor Strick, and I will see you guys on Sunday. God bless you. Hey, what's up, everybody? What a powerful devotional. 
not because I did it, but simply because it is the word of God. Speaking of devotional, make sure that you go to the website, beatmetothestar.net and download the family that prays together devotional. I believe that every Christian needs this in your repertoire, especially for your prayer life. It's going to increase your prayer life and in strengthen, uh, and it's going to strengthen your prayer life. So go to the website, beatmetothestar.net. Make sure that you download the family that prays. I'm doing something that is a spinoff from Subjects That Sizzle. Last summer, we did a series called Subjects That Sizzle in which we tackled all of the hot button topics in Christendom. And we told Christians what the Bible says about these particular topics so that we can formulate our beliefs from the word and not from the world. Well, unconventional conversations is not talking to Christians about these hot button topics. It is actually talking to people, both Christian and non-Christian, who are actually in these hot button topics, who are in the lifestyle and once upon a time were in the lifestyle. I did a conversation call from porn to the pulpit. I did one with a Hebrew Israelite. I did one with a Christian who currently struggles with homosexuality. I did one with a business owner who had a stint in prison who tried every single different faith. This is going to drop the first Wednesday in September. Make sure that you're on the lookout for that. In closing, several ways to be able to give God our best, not to a church, but through a church. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. were open. Sunday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. were open. If you're giving in person, but those hours don't fit, we have a drop box open 24 hours a day. Come up the church steps, go to the left, go to the brick part of the building, look to the right, you'll see the drop box, mailing your cash, your checks, your money orders to 7400 London Avenue South, 35206. Give online, beat me to the star.net forward slash give. Give by text. Text the amount that God has laid upon your heart to 855 912 7781. Cash app. Dollar sign, beat me to the star, Venmo at beat me to the star, Lord. Take us from this place, but never from your presence. Bless the gifts and the givers. May they be used for the edification and the upbuilding of your kingdom. Lord, answer our prayers. Now unto him that's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be their glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And everyone that agreed with this prayer said amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. See you soon. Peace.